Hi, Lou Agave, Long Island Lou Tequila. Please like my social media. Today, we're back with Siempre. Now, Siempre is a brand that Alex LaCroix and his company, his cousins and Monica and a whole gang is doing. These are beautiful labels, too. And this is his new Blanco, which is 110 proof, and I'm going to show you about it. And it's at La Cofradia now. He is gone from 1438. He's at La Cofradia. Okay, and he's over there at the uh, Nam 1137, okay? So, he likes it there. They found an old Tohono, a little Tohono, which they put back in action, believe it or not. You know, La Covadilla had one, but they never use it. He put all kinds of weird stuff into making this Blanco. Now, you know, because he's creative, this guy. You know, he's, he just wants to keep doing wild stuff, and I like that. I just did the review on this. This is the Vivo. You got to run and look at my review, guys, if you haven't seen it. This is his, like, special edition. He's going to travel around. He's going to do stuff. This was at 1414. Oh, my God. Check this out. So, yeah, he comes out with this now 110 high-proof Blanco at La Cofradia. And it's called the Supremo. So this is the new Supremo line, okay? This is what he got now going on at La Cofradia, now I'm 1137, all right? So what's special about this is a couple things, all right? First of all, the agaves, okay, are what they call very maduro. So that means very ripened, okay? And that's what they use in here, okay? Then they cooked it in traditional brick ovens, but they used a very low heat, which takes a lot longer to cook in the brick ovens, all right? They used that tahona that they put back in service, but it's really small. So he's tell that's what they used to crush with. But it was so small that Alex was telling me that it took forever to get everything macerated, all right? But he said it imp impacted the flavors in a very positive way. Then they used that wild fermentation, okay? That means there's no... You know, they didn't put any yeast in at all. All comes from the natural environment around a distillery, be that floral, fruit trees, whatever it might be. It all comes into the distillery, settles into the open air fermentation tanks and takes a lot longer. They just waited it out. They were in no rush. Eventually, it all started to ferment, which was cool. I mean, really kind of like a natural type of thing, you know. And also, they use the fibers, the bagazzo, in the fermentation. So that's just like, that's that boldness that you're going to get, you know? I mean, why throw it out, like he said? He likes to use that, and it really adds a lot. You know, Carlos and some other people do that a lot. And they didn't use any heat on the um, fermentation tanks either. So everything was real natural, the way that all went over there. And after that... When he does the distillation, it was double distilled in stainless steel with copper. And he was saying that they did it where it was hotter than usual. OK, so they distilled hotter. OK, and he said that makes it a little cloudy. Um, and so, you know, they it had tons of flavor, though. So he said they then um, cut it at 58 percent ABV. That's 116 proof. That's when they added the water. And my goodness, uh, it's slightly filtered. Uh, from the between the collection tank, he tells me, and the holding tank, and that was to get out and make it clear again um, after some of the stuff that went on with the distillation. They use uh, volcanic spring water, and it's additive free. So then after all of that, it sits in stainless steel tanks for eight months. So there's a lot of stuff that happened here, you know. As I explained, all right? So, uh, you know, he's been mixing it up now and doing different things with his procedures, which is real cool, like he did over here with the Vivo, all right? So we're going to give this a shot now. I want to let you know that, whew, uh, the Supremo right here, this 110 proof, wow. Let me tell you something. The boldness is insane, and the sharpness of the sugar coming right at me, and cinnamon, and like hot pepper. My God, like a jalapeno. This, this is uh, actually... This is nice. Um, $69 is the Supremo. That's what he said the recommended price for this guy is going to be, all right? And uh, then we're going to tell you about something else going on with these puppies that you see over here. So let's do this. Whew. Yeah, like it's it's got a little bit of that La Cofetilla funk that we get. You know, it's like a herbalness. Um, could be, uh, could be uh, actually just coming from his wild yeast also. But I like it. It's it's mint. It's mint. It's herbal. It's uh, floral. It's got a it's got a lot of sweetness in there. Fruity. 
almost like an almond thing, almost like a nutmeg. You know, it's interesting. There's a lot of boldness for a Blanco. This is pretty interesting. And that cinnamon hots is coming right through too, you know. A little bit of alcohol heat, but not much. A little anise. Almost like a hay, like in a barn, which is good. I like that on some of the really amazing products that I like. But yeah, this is cool. Earthy and all of that. This, this is nice. Like I say, it's uh, got a real involved nose, uh, more so than a normal Blanco. Mm. Mm. The heat is there. The cinnamon hots is there. Wow. That was first sip, so we're going to let it chill out for a second, and we're going to give it another shot. But I like it. I like it. It's really hot and full of cinnamon and red hots and definitely uh, some alcohol coming in on me on that. Still got a little of that herbalness and that funkiness, earthy, tangy maybe. Hmm. A little salty. Anise again. The hot pepper. It's sweet. I get in cooked agave. It's kind of right there in your face. Uh, the cinnamon is really there, too. I like this. I like this. Um, this is nice. This is the Supremo coming out of La Cofadilla. And, uh, you know, I don't really uh, have a lot of love for a lot of the products at La Cofadilla. This might be like maybe my favorite that's being produced there right now. I'm serious. I, you know, um, I like high proof, so that's going to affect this as well. And I think that price of $69 for an 110 proof made with a Tohona, wild yeast, and all those other manipulations of the fermentation and distillation that he uses and those uh, overly ripened agaves, that's making it a slamming deal. I'm going to go with an 86 on Tequila Matchmaker. So, yeah, I mean, I like this better th the second and third time I tried it than the first time. I'm really getting it all right now. Hmm. Really nice. So, we're going to get right into this real quick. Now, what we got going on over here, guys, this is Siempre's also come out with this uh, new edition, also at a La Cofradia, called the Edition Especial. So, these are called Rebel Casks. They're all single barrel reposados, okay? And they um, were heavily aged. A couple of them were only two days short of being an Añejo, he tells me, okay? So, I noticed all of that. I've been hitting on them and stuff. I'm not going to taste them all, but I wanted to tell you that, you know, like what I have here is I have new virgin American oak is one of them. It's eight months aged. Okay. Um, then we have the Bordeaux, the uh, Sortenese, which is uh, five months aged. Then he's got a mythology bourbon cask, which was eight months age, and then he's got virgin new French oak, which was seven months. So with, with the ones that were never used, you don't have a virgin, I got a lot of wood. It was a little too much for me, maybe. Um, it was like it gets astringent, you know, dries out real quick and all of that. Um, but I got a lot of wood. That's why. But I did have a favorite, and I guess it was this guy. It's called the Mythology Bourbon. And I got to tell you, I was sipping on this last night. This is damn good. Um... You know, and now these are going to be $79, the Rebel Cast. That's what they're going for. That's not expensive for a single barrel reposado. And that's made the same way. They use the Supremo 110 proof to start out with these guys. So, hey, listen, huh, that's a pretty nice procedure right off the bat, you know. And, you know, he's telling me the whole idea for this calling it Rebel. They come from, they come from the old days when... The smugglers would smuggle tequila up to Texas during Prohibition. But the Texans said, no, nah, we're not drinking a clear spirit. It has to be brown like whiskey and bourbon. What are you guys doing to me? So they would go back and any way they could, they would quickly age it to make it brown. So he was telling me this is a throwback to the rebel days when that was going on, when they really started aging, uh, you know, a lot of the Blancos. And, uh, you know, so that's where they come up with this name. Now, the reason this is going to be hard to find right now is they're launching it slowly because they have limited help, but it's going to end up in 22 states by 2023. They already, um, they already launched in uh, Connecticut, Nevada last week, and they're going to be in Georgia, Tennessee, New York, California, Arkansas, and Oklahoma before the holidays of this year. All right, so you're going to start to see these. They have so many, they have 17 single barrel reposados that they're going to sell. There's 20 barrels on the market. Three of them are, you know, the same barrels. 
but that they that the other seven one of the other seventeens were. But there's seventeen, so they're all coming out. They're all only that price of seventy nine dollars, and they got stuff like uh, Willits. They have Buffalo Trace. They have uh, they have like the ones I mentioned here, Breckenridge. They have so many others. So there's gonna be seventeen of them. That's pretty. They, he gets, said he gets about three to four hundred bottles out of each barrel. Now they're also going to be releasing a younger aged version of the Reposados for the Re, uh, for the uh, Rebel cast in the future runs, and I'm gonna like that. I think a little more. Yeah, this one's my favorite. Nice and sweet. It's um, it's still astringent, but not so much. Even though it was eight months, um, that's nice. You know, honey. You know, I'm getting, I'm getting some, uh, some, some, you know, vanilla and caramel. Not a lot, though. Very little. Uh, maybe some uh, butterscotch. This is really nice. So he's got some unique stuff going on here. He really does. Um, you got the uh, Rebel, okay? And this is the Rebel edition. You're gonna start seeing these, all right? You got this guy, which is, forget about it, it's unbelievable. And now you got the new Siempre, and you have the Supremo. I like it a lot, I really do. So, it's Lou Agave, Long Island Lou Tequila. Please check out my social media, and it's Siempre.